All right, let's talk about stress. Uh, there are a whole lot more effective ways to manage stress than the way we Americans manage it. We're going to do a deep dive on that today because the data is unbelievable. It's crazy uh, about stress. And so I've got a lot of data here, and then we're going to talk about what do we do about the stress issue. And we're going to look at stress from two ways, professional and personal, because you can't just say it's all personal related. You can't just say it's all professional related. Uh, so we're going to dive in here. All right, let's 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 start with where we stand. According to the World Health Organization, 63% of U.S. workers, and that will be our focus, this is the United States here, 63% uh, of U.S. workers are ready to quit their job to avoid work-related stress. And I, I think we forget that stress that is generated in the office follows us everywhere we go. And the data, um, it, it, it's really, really grim. Now, we're going to get to, in just a moment, three areas, body, mood, and behavior. But I want to paint the picture here. I'm going to do a deep dive uh, in this, this article here on, on stress in America. Top sources of stress. Not all of these are work-related. Top sources of stress. The rise of prices. So we've heard about the inflation game. Inflation's been going on. You can look at the day-in, day-out stuff on inflation, but the bottom line is gas, groceries, utilities, rent. You start looking at the things that affect us every day. They've gone up, and they've stayed up. By the way, even when inflation abates a little bit, the prices are still there. It's just the rate at which they grow slows, right? So the watermark is higher. Global uncertainty, another major cause of stress. You think of things like Russia invading Ukraine. You look at the Mideast situation between Palestine and Israel. It's a war. Okay, These type of things, because of the incessant headlines, and we have so much news at our disposal. I mean, we have it on our phones. We have it on our computers. It's scrolling on TV. It's the scroll of doom and gloom. Makes a lot of sense. The stress level experienced by Americans is 26, excuse me, 20 percentage points higher than the global average. So you take the, every other country, all the countries of the world, you take their stress, you average it, and then you take the United States, and the United States is 20% higher as it relates to stress. 55% of Americans are stressed during the day. Stress causes 57% of U.S. Respondents to feel paralyzed, stuck. I got news for you. If you're stressed to the point of not being able to decide, if you're stressed to the point of not being able to do, can I tell you that being stuck or paralyzed creates more stress? It's just like a hamster wheel. 63% of U.S. workers are ready to quit their job to avoid work-related stress. By the way, that change of quitting a job, very stressful. Are you starting to catch the pattern here? Stress gives birth to more stress. Stress is like New York rats, constantly breeding. More rats. The more stressed I am, the more stressed I will become if I do not take action. Chronic stress is commonplace at work with 94% of workers feeling stress at work. Now, quick little aside here. I see this piece of data, and this is for some of you who what you consider stress, something that harms you, it's actually something that can help you. This is a quick aside. When you see a number like this, 94% of workers report feeling stress at work, well, it ought to be 100%. 100% of you should feel some level of stress at work. Not all stress is bad stress, okay? You ever heard of things like the stress test that they will do, engineers will do, to make sure that a bridge or uh, that a structure? Listen, there is good stress and bad stress. And when I see a number like 94% of Americans 
experience stress at work, it's like, good grief, snowflake. Yeah, you ought to feel some stress. I got to go work out tonight. If I don't feel any stress on my muscles at my workout tonight, guess what? I've wasted my time. In other words, giving effort has a level of positive stress, right? I am focused, moving, active, proactive, engaged. It's going to stress me a little bit. Why? Because I am giving effort. So just a quick aside, we've got to a point now where we have raised generations of people who are now workers. And I've talked about this helicopter parenting, and we've created snowflakes. And these are people, quite frankly, not everybody, but they just can't handle any stress. There's a difference between good stress and bad stress. In other words, the first time your kid has to give a speech in front of his classmates, he's going to be stressed out. She's going to be stressed out. Can I just tell you something? That's good for them. They got to learn how to handle that. That's good stress. There's a difference. It's called performance. You got to do it. You'll be fine. All right. 35% of workers say their boss. Now we're getting into the work causes. Because we've been talking about living conditions, the political climate, financial insecurity as relates to debt. 35% of workers say their boss is the cause of their workplace stress. We go further. 80% 80% of U.S. workers experience work stress because of ineffective company communications. I got news for you. That's because your boss. Your boss is accountable for that. 39% of American employees report their workload is the main source of their work stress. I got news for you. That's your boss. 49% of 18, 24-year-olds felt comparing themselves to others is a stressor. That's social media comparison. So, a lot of reasons for stress. Now, let's just go back to where we're at. What is the impact of stress? Well, there's stress on your body. Think of headaches, muscle pain, chest pain, fatigue, can't sleep. Maybe your stomach's jacked up and all of that. We know from data that stress itself weakens your immune system. So all of a sudden you're not as healthy because you can't fight sickness. Stress affects your mood. Come on. Anxiety, restlessness, lack of focus, Lack of motivation. Can't even do anything because you're so stressed out, stuck in worry. You have memory problems, feeling overwhelmed, grumpy, depression. And then the impact of stress, it affects our behavior. Not just our mood. That leads to now we're going to overeat. Come on. I'm an overeater. I'm stressed. Watch out. Chips and salsa on the way. Pasta, bread, I'm in. Okay, under eating, loss of appetite, you don't eat, angry outbursts, isolating yourself from family, from friends, becoming sedentary. These are all effects of stress. So understanding what is stressing people out. So let's just bucket them for you. Let's talk about finances, credit card debt, all time high, student loan debt in the trillions of dollars. So finances, the ability to be able to take care of yourself, work, overwork, bad communication, don't know what expectations are, feel like I'm getting overlooked. I can go on and on and on. Personal, raising kids, hello, that's stressful. Teenagers, good grief. World, World news. We look at news all the time. News stresses us out. What do we do? We keep watching more of it. These are all causes of stress. And understanding this at a very simple level, and I didn't tell you anything you didn't know today, but I'm calling out that you have got to be really intentional, proactive to say, what are those areas? I look at those areas. Where am I stressed? Are all of those trigger points for me for stress? If they are, what do I do about it? So we're going to talk about that next. There's a simple little hack that can literally change the way stress comes and goes and can change your life. I'm telling you, it's the most simple hack there is, and it works. More on that coming up.